general determinism states that all events, including human action, are ultimately determined by causes external to the will, and that for every event there exist conditions that could cause no other event. It seems you don't agree with those tenets. Your beliefs about a will having a role in the process seems to indicate that you are more a proponent of causal determinism, which is fine. So it isn't a question of general determinism here. It's a question of causal determinism. I make the distinction of predetermination and predestination because it's crucial to the crux of the question at hand here. Putting the will, thoughts, and feelings into the equation are specific decisions predestined to be made prior to the decision, or is the decision determined in the moment it happens? In other words, if we equate the chain of events to the metaphor of a film strip, is each frame in the strip always the same, no matter where we look on the strip? Or is a frame on the strip determined only when it comes up as the current frame? If you agree that for every event there existed conditions that could cause no other event, then it reinforces the pointlessness of speaking about hypothetical situations where some sense of choice of doings can suddenly produce alternative behaviors that can lead to different outcomes. This assumes that a being has some other option, other than how they are deterministically affected by the causality process. This is either the result of faulty reasoning, philosophical dyslexia, or just pure sophism. Whatever happens is causally determined. Therefore, anything that is, is meant to be that way. Even a guy who decides to sit on the couch for 50 years doing nothing, it was meant to be that way. Who is anyone to act as the judge of their causally determined trajectory? As if they were somehow exceptions to the rules of causal determinism, and are not acting exactly as they were determined to act. To talk about all this existential function is pointless, as it is all illusory function. You can talk about thoughts, feelings, considerations, and decisions all you want, but that doesn't change that this is all empty talk about empty phenomena going through the motions. If you reverse time and let it occur again, the same decisions occur. That's similar to reversing the film projector and letting a scene play again. It may be a scene of a man making a decision, but there really is no decision being made. It may be a scene of a crime and punishment, but there really is no crime and punishment happening. These are just determined arrangements of content arranging and rearranging themselves in a predestined pattern. Decisions are meant to be the way they are. Yes, it has nothing to do with intention. There may be an appearance of a decision, but in reality, there isn't any real decision. Intellectual narrative about the workings of determinism is just intellectual narrative, nothing more. A guy in a scene in a movie who is trying to convince soldiers to show up for the battle is not doing anything of substance. He's not actually convincing anyone of anything. Whoever shows up in the next scene shows up. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. 
to attribute the pattern of images and sounds projected on the movie screen to things happening within the movie is to buy illusion at face value and ignore the underlying truth behind the images and sounds on the film strip. These images and sounds are simply patterns going through motions according to a predetermined sequence. Now you thinking that it matters. That communication about hypothetical outcomes has an effect of changing what people think and what they will do. Are just assumptions and intellectual narrative. To try and hold ground for determinism with a whole bunch of abstractions concerning the utility of an unmeasurable incorporeal aspect such as thoughts or feelings, doesn't meet the hard material scientific standard that would allow them to be posited as facts. Take away all that romantic narrative and all you have are the hard, clear, measurable results from the interaction of action, force, and objects, mass. I didn't imply that if something happens, it should happen. Not only did I not imply that, but it also happens to be a false premise within itself. As it does not follow that a conclusion of there may be a scene of a crime and punishment happening, but there really is no crime and punishment happening, would follow from a premise that whatever happens should happen. This type of conclusion would follow from the truth of the observation that phenomena is happening and nothing more, thereby maintaining the integrity of cognitive honesty by not superimposing an assumption upon this phenomena. When boiled down, crime and punishment are more examples of the phenomena of interaction between objects whether or not punishment works is inconsequential as this represents more intellectual narrative about the interaction of objects but evidence doesn't really support that claim as a true deterrent should wipe out a targeted behavior and yet criminal behavior has always been alive and well Hence, one could just as easily argue that it's already determined well in advance whether anyone will become a criminal or not. Communication having an effect on something is not grounded on anything but assumption, and also not a proper format to present as support for determinism, as it has no tangible weight scientifically. I would posit that there is more scientific evidence to support a premise of communication has no effect on people than the contrary. As I previously pointed out, it's already been shown in experiments in neurological science that the subconscious mind has already determined an action long before any communication thoughts or feelings even make it into the mix. So don't infer a conclusion you personally derive from the statements. Rather, just stick to the actual explicit statements. I am not implying that a crime isn't a crime due to it being the result of causality, thus showing it should be this way. I am implying that a crime isn't a crime because in order for a crime to be a crime, the event requires an intellectual narrative, which is just a story superimposed upon a determined arrangement of materials that arrange and rearrange themselves in predestined patterns. I want to stick to the hard facts about the phenomena and avoid the tendency of telling subjective stories about the phenomena. So, my assertion that an interaction of objects was meant to be 
should not be conflated with an idea that the interaction of objects should be. Obviously, if we rewind the film and watch it again, we will see that the scene of crime and punishment only plays one way. We can rewind it hundreds and thousands of times, but it will never play another way. So, in this way, the scene was meant to be this way. The mere fact of a particular interaction of objects doesn't leave room for any woulds, coulds, shoulds, oughts, or ought-nots. Hence, and this harkens back to the initial point, since the scene is determined to play the way it always ultimately plays, the practice of casting judgments and narratives upon this predetermined mechanical process of interacting objects is an exercise of pointlessness and futility. Now, when I said that, it does not follow that a conclusion of there may be a scene of crime and punishment happening, but there really is no scene of crime and punishment happening, would follow from a premise that whatever happens should happen. But I wasn't referring to instances of events being considered crimes when they shouldn't be considered crimes. What I was referring to is that if someone had a premise of whatever happens should happen, that this premise doesn't mean that one's personal feelings about circumstances can change the unconscious conditioning that contextualizes the meanings they use to define such circumstances. Hence, we can dispense with this item. As I am not arguing any causal event to be defined via an intention, and the premise is faulty within itself to begin with. As for whether or not punishment is a deterrent, to believe so is, once again, the result of telling a subjectively constructed story about the behavior of objects interacting with each other. If we cut out all that talk, turn down the sound on the movie, and just watch how the objects behave in the scenes, and then rewind it and watch it again, we will see that all the object's movements are always the same, regardless of any intellectual abstractions told, whether it be about punishments or deterrence or otherwise. The issue here seems to be the ability to discern between the object of reality and the concept of reality.